Hello and good day everyone. Fortunately, I had COVID-19 past two weeks so I couldn't make any video and I was far behind. Anyway, let's jump into this new video. So I'm going to talk about the book of Paul Fat. Due to COVID-19, I couldn't make any video about episode 6 and episode 7 so I'm going to make a whole video about season 1. Well, how would I start is the book of Boba Fat was a fine TV series but at the same time it was disappointing. As a fan of Clone Wars and Mandalorian, I wasn't that much expecting from this TV series. I just opened to it without any expectation. In the first episodes, the first four episodes, in my opinion, it was fine. But then it just start going cranky. I'm not gonna lie, the episode 5 actually was my favorite episode of Book of Boba Fat. And it wasn't about Boba Fat, it was about Din Djarin in Mandalorian. And that's the sort of problem with the Book of Boba Fat because the main character right now is a side character. And not only for one episode, we have two complete episodes about Din Djarin and nothing about Boba Fat. At the end of episode 6, we actually introduced in something big. We introduced to Cat Bane. I was jingling myself. Oh shit, Cat Bane. We have Cat Bane in this season. And my expectation for the episode 7 was completely different that time. I was thinking about a season finale about Cat Bane and Boba Fat, something from the back a backflash and it's all about this too the relation this two had because if, if you don't know the um, Django Fat was a mentor to the Cat Bane and Cat Bane was a mentor for the Boba Fat Django Fat is father of Boba Fat right you know that and these two have a close relation to each other back in Clone Wars and they turn against each other. And there was an unfinished arc in Clone Wars, these two actually gonna have a duel against each other. And uh, actually we have elements of that duel happening on uh, Cat Bane's armor and Boba Fett's armor. But instead I get, you know what? And the only thing we have from Cat Bane was just um, fight emotional damn it why the entire fight for me was a mess Bobo Fat is a mercenary he lived most of his life as a bounty hunter as a son of Django Fat that fight second for me was not satisfying at all Yet it in, in first uh, minutes of fight, that seconds they're just using jetpacks and just rushing to the enemy, that was satisfying. I liked that seconds. But we go forward, and what happened regard to that they had to hold from that position was a mess. And Boba Fett just run back to his palace, and instead of getting his gunship. We have a rancor walking the city. <sighs> well, I just I like that seconds of a rancor uh, entering the battlefield and with the droid. The droid actually did something impressive, at least from my point of view. The scorpion droid actually changed the power focus of the shield he changes from the back to the front to have more protection against rancor oh my god yeah yeah it happened in the same episode yeah 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 i can understand that in one way that the Boba Fett used the Rancor because he wanted to be seen fighting in Tatooine so he can earn people respect. Huh? Maybe. Maybe he's doing from that, but uh, from my point of view, I'll go directly from the gunship. I'm going for the gunship. Let's talk about another elephant of the room, the Dinjarin and Grogu. 
this Grogu just shown up from nowhere in an X-Wing alone. Yeah, alone. The only thing he had was R2D2 droid. I, I, I really need to talk with Lucas Skywalker about that. You're not a good dad, bruh. You're not. <laughs> and Phoenix Shane and Chris Santon, they're two of close friends of Boba Fett, just wasn't there for most of this episode. We only seen him in a few seconds. Why? Nobody knows. Instead, we got the fight between Boba Fett and Cat Bane. I didn't like it at all. And Cat Bane just using some silly words. I knew you were a killer. And no, no. The Cat Bane I, I saw in the episode six wasn't there anymore for me. It just was like uh, seeing the Zack Snyder's Justice <laughs> trailer back in 2016 and I'm going to theater and see the second row from Josh Whedon Justice League. You love me. I just remembered that third second and I'm gonna leave the elephants for a few minutes. Oh, I just get mad. Well, regards to the future of this small universe of Star Wars and TV series, I actually have a theory that how they gonna actually make uh, push it forward. I think the Disney actually wants to create a small Avengers from them. Uh, how can I explain it in an easy way? Um, I don't know how many DC fans I have right now watching this thing. I know if you be a true DC fan, you don't watch the CW shows, especially the Arrowverse. I, I, I don't watch them, I just hear about them. What I'm thinking about is uh, in a small scale of TV series connecting to each other for a big crossover like what happened in the crisis in infinite earth we had crossovers in multiple episodes of multiple tv series we can have a tv series a mini series connecting all the <clears throat> series spin-off from the mandalorian together for a big final fight and like a small avengers in a star wars avengers and i think that's gonna connect with the mandalore we're taking Mandalore from Grand Admiral Throne. And I'm gonna just gonna leave it in, in this series, in this place, because I actually wanna wait to watch the Obi Wan Kenobi TV series and Sukatano TV series. So I um, actually wanna just put these two together. If 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 these two spin off connect to each other the way I have in my mind. I will make a video about it, about my theory going forward of this small Star Wars universe in the Disney Plus. So I think that's pretty much it for tonight. Have a good time everyone.